Are you ready to learn more about how you can build awesome integrations for your environment with clicks and not code? Today, I'm joined by Ashley Simons, who's a product owner for MuleSoft Composer. Composer is a very innovative and exciting new tool for MuleSoft that will allow you to build integrations with clicks. And we're super excited to hear more from Ashley and to get a sneak peek at Composer. Please remember to make all your purchasing decisions based on currently available technologies because we will be talking about some of the Composer roadmap. And without any further ado, let's go hear from Ashley. Hey everyone, thank you for joining us. I'm super excited to be joined today by Ashley Simons, our awesome product manager from MuleSoft. Ashley, it's so nice to meet you. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you so much for inviting me onto this podcast. So you're talking to an awesome audience. It's our audience of awesome admins. And tell our admins a little bit about yourself. How long have you been with Salesforce MuleSoft and working with Composer? Yeah, it is a great question. So I've been at MuleSoft now two and a half years. And I pivoted over to start working with the Composer team actually at inception. So we have been dreaming this up for you since January of last year, really by February, it had taken shape as a Composer product. Uh, we can talk through some of the evolutions of it. I mean, it's definitely taken a few exciting turns around the way, along the way, and really excited now to be bringing it to our audience. I think by the time this airs, it will have just launched, which is super exciting. Yeah. So yeah, by the time this airs, Composer will have just launched. And so we're super excited for the admins to get hands on with it because as you and I have talked about, this is really an admin tool. This is a tool that's built, you know, for admins. Um, and so that's something that I know makes me super excited um, about Composer and just seeing all of the things our admins are going to be able to do with it. Um, let's talk a little bit more about like who should be using these tools and, and who have you seen um, using Composer and, and, and finding value with Composer? Yeah, it's a great question. I, I mentioned before we've had strategy pivots along the way. And actually, one of the major ones is when we first decided that we were going to ship this product in Salesforce. I mean, MuleSoft has been a part of the Salesforce ecosystem for oh, just over three years now, but our, our product suite has been somewhat separate. And, and so when we started thinking through this Composer solution and trying to democratize who is building integrations and serve a, a, a different audience, not the central IT team that's really looking to digitally transform their whole business, but rather line of business users and other types of business users that need to do these types of integrations, we said, well, that's a Salesforce admin. I mean, that is our sweet spot. And as soon as we sort of came to this realization, we made a big strategy pivot to actually ship Composer in Salesforce and really design it for you, for these awesome admins who have these integration needs. And so that has been at the forefront since last year of who we are designing this product for. It's, it's for Salesforce admins. And that has in, it's influenced how we've built it. We have had been paying attention to other builder patterns for other Salesforce builder tools so that there's familiarity with a tool like Composer. Uh, and it's it's really been at the core of how we're thinking about building it. You also, Leanne, you mentioned how, who, who is this for? Who is using this? And, and MuleSoft today, we've really been winning in the area of central IT and the enterprise customers. And those are probably what a lot of people think of when they first think of integration and digitally transforming the business. But there are other companies as well, smaller, mid-market, maybe less of a strong central IT presence or line of businesses that can't rely directly on IT. And so that's who we're going after, really taking a tool that allows them to self-serve and build these integrations as well. I love that. I love hearing about admins being able to self-serve, build things on their own because so many of our admin audience, you know, they really are the product managers and product owners of their Salesforce implementation, right? So they're often the ones that are managing integrations, managing those kind of architecture decisions um, for their orgs. And so it's great to hear about tools being delivered right in Salesforce that are for them to really own that from start to finish. Um, I know that that's something that our admins are really excited about. So we've talked about, you know, who's going to use this and why we're so excited about it, but we should probably take a step back and talk a little bit about what Composer is. 
right? So hopefully you caught our um, some of the Composer launch content. We've got a blog on admins and all of that about all, how amazing Composer is, but we want to hear it, you know, right from the product owner. Um, Ashley, can you tell us a little bit about like what is Composer and, you know, how would an admin actually like engage with Composer? Like where does it fit in their business use case? Yeah, it is a great question. Um, probably what you're wondering if you haven't seen some of the Dreamforce videos or other awesome content that's out there. But at its core, Composer is a sweet spot. It's just a lightweight integration automation tool. And so it is meant for users that particularly have data that resides in multiple systems that you want to have integrated and or to facilitate processes that rely on data from multiple systems. Uh, there might be some questions about how it compares with other core integration tools. You think, hey, there are other tools within Salesforce. And I know we're talking about other Salesforce tools, not our, our outside competitors. This is not a replacement to any sorts of tools like Flow Builder or Salesforce Connect or Heroku Connect or App Exchange Connectors. They all have their own sort of niche areas. And, and Composer is a complementary product here. And Sweet Spot is, is lightweight on integration automations. And particularly if you want to be triggering for events from other systems that are not mm -hmm. in Salesforce. So if you want the event that's kicking off this flow, if that's data that lives in NetSuite when a new record is updated there or data that lives in Workday and you want to make sure that, that you have a multi-legged automation flow that's working with data from multiple systems and maybe even bringing that big back into Salesforce or, or vice versa, that's where a tool like Composer is going to come and help you. Well, we know our admins love automating things and love building and workflows and automation. So like that's going to be really huge for them, I think, is building, being able to build in some of that like business knowledge, business intelligence right into um, the integration that they now can actually build on their own, which is really cool. Um, so you mentioned some of the other core Salesforce integration tools and, and, you know, this is a very big topic, right? Like looking at our integration matrix and, and all of the various integration tools that um, are available to Salesforce admins, Salesforce developers, Salesforce architects. But what is a good um, kind of high level way for admins to think about um, where does this sit alongside, like you mentioned, Flow or alongside um, connector, like other integration tools, you know, how should they, like you mentioned, you know, it's a really good fit when they want to integrate into like a business process. Is there any other things they should be considering about, you know, when, when would it be the right time to investigate Composer for a solution? Yeah. Well, first of all, we are going to be providing some more materials just around that. So if you're thinking about how Composer fits into the broader ecosystem, we're going to have some better deep dive materials, but to, to just sort of skim the surface, at least in, in this conversation, really, I think some key things you want to be thinking about is if you want that triggering event to be in a different system that is outside of Salesforce and you're listening to an event happening in a NetSuite, in a Workday, in a Jira, else outside, that's probably going to be a clue to point you towards something like Composer. And, and also if it's a multi-legged flow that has other logic in it, like you need to build conditional logic out. You want to be adding some looping. You want to do different types of build, you know, like building formulas on top of it. That's also another clue to, to point you towards Composer. Nice. Um, so what are some of the most common, you know, as you've been working on this product and as you've been doing all the user research and understanding like how our customers and where this fits with our customers, um, what are some of the most common use cases you've come across? There's, you know, that our admins who might be listening right now, uh, maybe encountering at their own companies. Yeah, it's a great question. We, like, like I said, as soon as we made the decision to be launching in Salesforce and really focusing on Salesforce admins as well, we started pivoting our thinking and all of our research around primarily sales and service cloud use cases and the primary needs that we're hearing in the systems you want to connect if you're a heavy sales or service cloud user. And so that's how we're, we've been focusing our research. And that's also where we are starting with our GA connectors. So right at GA with our MVP launch, we are going to have six connectors that are available. And those are Salesforce, of course, uh, Tableau, also, of course, also part of our ecosystem, and then NetSuite, Workday, Google Sheets, and Slack. Oh, actually, also now part of our ecosystem and part of our Salesforce family. And so these were primarily chosen as the, the top 
systems that bubble up because of some of these sales service cloud use cases. And so as a result, if we're, you know, that's just right out of the bat at GA. And so some of the things, those, those fall into three primary buckets, really. One is, is high level sort of quote to cash, but also improving sales productivity use cases. So use cases that involve your ERP of, of NetSuite and Salesforce and making sure that data is, is synced between those. You, you want to close an opportunity and it has opportunity products on it. You want to make sure the necessary inventory information is available in NetSuite before you close that. And so you need that to be synced. Um, sales orders, when you close it, you want to automatically create a sales order in NetSuite. So those sorts of common ERP use cases as well. Then if we think Slack coming into the mix, that ties in more collaboration. And so if you think about Salesforce and Slack, hey, I have a new opportunity that has just closed. I want to automatically send the opportunity details to deal desk and information about them and notify mm -hmm. them. And then the final one is I mentioned Workday. And so that's really around employee provisioning and, and use cases that surround that area. So just to, to summarize, six connectors at GA really focused in those key areas. But the thing about Composer is that that's just our MVP. And so we are listening to the feedback and we are growing and we have a prioritized list of the next connectors. We're going to be releasing them monthly. And so those are going to continue to be rounding out the sales and service cloud use cases that we're, we're hearing from, from users. This is all coming from talking with admins like you. That's awesome. I'm super excited about the initial six composer um, uh, partnerships that are being launched, but then also um, hearing that it's, you know, this kind of developing roadmap and that feedback is really important. Is there, just for all of our admins on the call who might be getting hands on with composers soon, um, where is the best place for them to provide that kind of feedback and to connect with you so they can share, you know, use cases that, that they would like to see or, uh, you know, just be part of that feedback loop and prioritization loop? No, it's a, a great question because we really are. So, you know, I'll, I'll answer that question, but just going back to the roadmap, I, I didn't stress this enough is, you know, we, we have a roadmap of what's coming, but a lot of it is being informed by users. And, and that's how we have the coming roadmap, but we also want that input, particularly around the connectors that we're going to be supporting. You know, that's the area where we're heavily invested in this coming year is scaling up which connectors we support and increasing that number monthly. So to answer your question specifically, um, there's a couple of different ways. First is we have a trailblazer community that has already gone live for MuleSoft Composer. And so since we announced it at Dreamforce, it's been live. People have been active there. So please get active there. We want to hear from you. We want you to engage with one another. That's an exciting place also to see. We post demos, we post other content. So that's one place. But also a little more concretely within that, there's also the ideas exchange, which I know you all are probably familiar with and have used. We're going to have our own Composer labels there. And we as product are going to be actively listening and paying attention, as long as we can find it and it's labeled, we will be hunting, we are going to be listening. And that's going to go directly into informing. As we start to see, there's a, a heavy area of interest. If it's a connector that we haven't already prioritized, it may in fact shift. I mean, it. we have some planned out that are already in development, but it can shift the coming coming months and quarters. So um, please engage and, and account reps. I mean, we're, we're listening through there too. So this reinforces always engage in the prioritization exercise. It's super important. Like I cannot say this enough. Product really does listen very much to all the feedback gathered during prioritization. So always engage. We send out notifications when it's happening. Um, that's awesome. I love hearing that. Um, so let's talk. So you mentioned roadmap and how heavily that's informed. Is there anything else? And of course, you know, safe Harbor here, we want to make sure that you're making all purchasing decisions based on currently available technology, but we do love hearing about, um, roadmap and, and help people get excited about all the solutions that they might be able to get access to. What are some other things besides, you know, widening that net of connectors that are available, um, other things that admins might be able to look forward to with Composer? Yeah, so I, I started with connectors because I know that's an area of heavy interest right now, particularly as you're saying, hey, this is a tool that sounds like it's for me, but I have X use case. And as soon as I have it, I want to adopt it. So that, that's a heavy area of focus. Um, 
we're going to also just be working on, I, I mean, it's an MVP, making this a tool that you know and love. And some of the not sexy stuff, but the stuff that's really going to make it feel like a wow factor of, of the guiding you through the process and making this as, as seamless to use as possible. So we will be heavily investing just on some of those areas that honestly, you know, aren't going to come out to be totally honest on, hey, mega marketing release of we added in-app guidance. But we'll be enhancing each of those areas. You know, there, there's the basics Rounding in the product the now. Yeah. Round out that experience. That's super important for a tool like this when we're first at launch. Um, but but otherwise, a couple of areas we'll be focused on. One is formulas. So being able to do data manipulations and transformations within the product will be rounding out areas of support there. Again, listening for input and feedback as always. And then an exciting one, again, Safe Harbor, we're working through timeline here, but I was going to be releasing templates. And I think this one really gets me excited because templates are a way that users can get started faster, can learn best practices. They can see, hey, I have this use case. Someone's already built it out. Or, hey, the Composer team has already built the structure. I just need to plug in my credentials and, and modify it and get started way faster. So that's going to be an area we start to invest in this year as well, so that it, it's just easier to get started and not have to build it all from scratch. So templates, meaning like taking some of those common use cases, like you mentioned, and kind of pre-structuring them out so people can just, you know, get ramped faster and maybe do some small edits and make it fit their business use case. Exactly. So you put the structure in there and then you come in and you, you authenticate into your Salesforce account, your NetSuite account. You add a few modifications for the fields you want to map, but at least the structure's in there as a starting point. That really lowers the barrier to entry too. I feel like, you know, having, having tools like templates, having tools that help you ramp faster with things like this. Cause you know, a lot of what we do as admins is manage a backlog, manage tech debt, try to prioritize work that we're doing on our own orgs, right. On our own environments. And so anything that helps us ramp faster there is just, you know, number one in my book. That's awesome. Okay, great. Well, I'm super excited. I'm so excited about Composer. Um, I think that this is something that's going to be really meaningful to our admins. I can't wait to see how they get hands on with it. But, you know, this wouldn't be, you know, admin content if we didn't also dive in and maybe get a sneak peek, get a little bit hands on, take a look at this product in action. I think you said you have a fun demo to show us. I do. I put to down put together a demo last night. So I, I'm going to swap over there and share my screen and, and we can dive in. All right. So we've now swapped into MuleSoft Composer and you guys are getting a bit of a sneak peek. This is our live environment. We're currently as record recording this a few weeks before launch, but getting excited to be sharing it and, and live when you're all watching. So Um, I have built a simple flow here. And first, the first thing you noticed is that we are embedded within Salesforce. And I think it's important to call attention to that first is that I, you didn't see me logging in, but you can see here that I am in my Salesforce account. That's where you will be able to install MuleSoft Composer and be able to begin using it. And I have a pre-built flow here for the interest of time, but I'm going to walk through some of the key parts of Composer and, and explain what this is doing. And then we can, you know, extrapolate it to other use cases as well. So what I have here is I am Northern Trail Outfitters and I am going to be hosting a pizza making competition. It's And I want people to be registering for this. I'm tracking all my campaign members in Salesforce. It could be a bigger campaign event. It doesn't have to be pizza making. This can be a big marketing event that you're going to be launching. But I'm tracking that here. But I also want to have a Google Sheets tracker that all of my team is coming in to look at for who is registered for this particular event. And it's also the, you know, I have other tabs open in that spreadsheet that tell me about, you know, the, the, the structure of the event, the agenda, everything I want to know. I want that to live in Google Sheets, but the details about attendees and their accounts, that's all in Salesforce. And I want to automate this. So every time a new member joins my campaign or my event, that my tracker is updated and I want this to update in real time. So I've built a composer flow for this. And the first step is what's triggering and kicking off this flow. I am in, I've authenticated to Salesforce and I am checking every time there's a new record of type campaign member 
I have certain fields that I care about that I know I want to track. And these are which account they're from. This is information like email and first name. So I've specified that. But what I want to open, which is super cool, is the sample output section. This is telling me exactly what data I am getting in that I'm going to be able to use in later steps of my flow. And not only is it telling me what fields or metadata I can use, it's actually giving me a sample value. And you wouldn't know this because you're not logged into my account, but Burritos for Goats, that company, and Cloudy the Goat, that is a real campaign member that I have added to my campaign. It is pulling that from the Salesforce account that I am logged into. So I can confirm I'm connected to my account. And this is a sample of an example of what sorts of data I'll be working with in my flow. So that's super exciting. Now that I know what data I'm going to be pulling in, I'm going to set up the rest of the steps. And they're really easy to configure. They're, they're just like the first step. I made this flow a little more complex by adding in a conditional statement. And here, I just want to make sure that every time I'm getting a new campaign member, that this isn't an internal employee. I don't really care as much about tracking them. Sorry, internal Northern Trail Outfitters, but I just want my external people. So I've added a really simple statement confirming that the company or account doesn't equal my company's name. And I can click here and show I did this all visually. I, I was able to see the different fields associated. I could select the operators. I can add the statement. I can add more conditions as well. Super easy. And from there, I add the steps that should happen based on if that condition is valid. And here it's, it's updating my spreadsheet. And so I am able to search for my spreadsheet. When I open this dropdown, I don't want to get rid of it, but uh, it's going to show all of my spreadsheets for my account. Again, I'm connected into my Google Sheets account and I selected my account. It's, it's all there. It's live. I'm not going off and having to search for my spreadsheet and paste it in. I see all of that data coming in. And from here, I can do simple mappings. These are the columns of my spreadsheet. Again, Composer pulls in. They know what the structure of your data looks like there. And I can map values in. And I'm going to get rid of this and just show what I was doing is actually mapping real data from my first step. And so I want to take the first name from the campaign member and I want to update the first name column using that data. It's all live. It's all in the product. I don't need to hard code it. It's just flowing through an already living in Composer. So super clear. You notice that the format of setting up the step in Google Sheets, similar to the format of the first step when I set it up with Salesforce. So regardless of what connector you're using, it's a really common experience across connectors. So as you're building out more and more flows and connecting to different systems, it's going to be that same familiar guided click through experience. So it feels really intuitive. Like I love that there's the logos or the identifiers yeah. for what place I'm working with. I feel like that, like I'm very visual, like that seems super nice and useful to make sure you're not getting, you know, switched up of which field or column am I working with, but it feels very intuitive for sure. Glad to hear that. <laughs> That's the goal. So I'm glad to hear that. Um, now I have a flow set up and before we activate flows, we always recommend, and I'm sure you wouldn't want to activate without doing this, test, test, test. I mean, you before you're going to have this run on your production data, first of all, you'll probably be designing with sandbox data and that makes sense. But for, also you want to test it. As you go along, you can test, you add a new step, you can keep testing. And so I'm going to test this flow right now and fingers crossed. Uh, and so I'm going to test it. And what I'm going to do then, actually, let me start the test, you know, press test. And then what I'm going to do immediately is actually swap into Salesforce. And this was the account you saw before where Cloudy the Goat is living as my campaign member. And I'm going to add a new contact. And all right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go in and add a new campaign member in my Salesforce account. So I have a new campaign member up. I'm going to add it. And remember, this is what sets off and triggers the flow. So I'm going to create it. And now I'm going to swap over to my Google Sheet tab where I am tracking for this event. And you see, voila, the new data from the campaign member I just added was added as a new row. And we can see the phone number, the first name, the email information has automatically been added. This is awesome. I am so excited. I know I said this already, but I'm so excited about this tool. Um, we've been 
talking about this for quite a while. This is something that's so impactful for uh, for admins. Now I want a piece of pizza. Um, so I loved your demo. Um, so this has been, I think our admins are gonna be really excited about it. And we definitely will be sharing everything you mentioned. Um, you know, we mentioned our launch blog, we mentioned um, some additional content in the group, all of that's going to be linked in the blog. Um, is there anything else that you want to make sure admins hear about with regards to this? Um, I know they're all going to be really excited to be working with you as one of our you know, newest kind of admin focused PM. So again, welcome again to the admin community, but um, anything else that you want to share with our admins before we wrap up? Oh, it's okay. I, I'm so excited to be also, thank you for welcoming me into the community. I, I've only just heard amazing things about working with this community. And I've seen that through those of you I've gotten to engage with early for some of the research, but now that we've launched, I, I can't re reiterate enough. One, we're just so excited to have you to be trying this tool and working with us. And we want to learn from you too. We want to hear about your experiences. We want to make you successful. And so please engage in, in those methods that we, we've talked about, whether it be the Trailblazer community, submitting ideas. We're going to be very active there, me, the, the rest of my product team and, and more. And so I, we want to hear from you. And so I, I'm just really excited to to launch this. It's been a long time coming. It's been a lot of work from, from many, many people within MuleSoft. And I'm really proud of my team. And I, I have to, I can't end without saying that, but we're, we're excited for you to be beginning with the tool with us. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Ashley. Thank you for the great demo. Thank you for sharing some of these insights. And um, thank you for joining us on our video chat here. Thanks so much for having me on. I'll see you next time. Bye. Thanks for joining us today, folks. That was Ashley Simons with MuleSoft Composer detailing some great ways that admins can build integrations with clicks and not code. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you never miss a video like this. And I will see you on our next Expert Corner.